Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am doing my much anticipated Fenty Beauty review. I ordered these products the second they launched on Sephora and my intention was to do a review as soon as I possibly could, but apparently the universe had other plans. Long story short, my package got stolen. I'm not going to go into the details. If you follow me on Snapchat, you already know everything that happened, but I had to wait for a replacement package from Sephora, which took a little bit longer. And by the time I finally got my replacement items, I was like, you know, pretty much all of the reviews on Fenty Beauty that I've seen have been first impressions and they haven't even included like a wear test or check-ins or an update or anything like that and I've already waited for these items so I was like I'm really going to put these items to the test and do a thorough in-depth review for you guys. Recently YouTube has kind of become this place where everyone races to get the new launches and get their review posted the second after they get the products just so they can get the most views and I think the integrity of reviews are really suffering because of this especially with something as subjective as a foundation you can't just slap it on and immediately say oh my gosh I love this it looks flawless you should go buy it I recommend it without at least wearing it for a full day first obviously I'm not trying to rag on first impressions because they're kind of my jam and they can definitely be highly informative they definitely have their place but how can you say you love a foundation without even wearing it for a full day I just really don't get it so as you can already see next to me here I did pick up four items from Fenty Beauty I picked up the primer the foundation one of the highlight duos and then also the gloss and I tested them out for an entire week. I am wearing all the products on my face today and I did film myself applying them. So as I'm going to be talking about the products, I will be playing clips of the application and then I will have like close-ups and things like that when I'm talking about signs of wear, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Obviously the main idea behind trying these products for a full week was so that I could really form an opinion on the foundation. So in order to do that, I tried it with the Fenty primer, with no primer, with other brands primers, etc so I could really put it to the test. I'm not going to lie, I am not overly impressed with most of the products that I have tried out, so just a heads up moving forward. And if you are new to my channel, my skin type is oily and extremely sensitive. I do have natural redness, and up until last year, I did suffer from very severe acne, so I do have some hyperpigmentation left over and some very, very minor textural scarring. But yeah, as always, all the products in today's video will be linked in the description bar if you wanna check them out for yourself. But let's get into this review. So naturally, we are going to start off with the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. I apologize in advance for these little dots of light from my blinds, and I apologize if you see them in the clips of me applying the products. It's either this or like super blown out overexposed light, but this primer has a lot of claims. It claims it will diffuse your pores, mattify and stop shine without feeling dry or chalky, and even your skin tone and texture for a filter-like blurring effect. To me, this product is kind of like a hybrid between a moisturizing primer, a silicone primer, and also a mattifying primer. It has a very unique texture and like a slightly cushiony kind of feel as you spread it over your skin. It goes on like a light lotion, but then it dries to a velvety, powdery finish. So it does just ever so slightly mattify the skin, and it does also have a light fragrance as well. I do agree that it does ever so slightly blur your skin, but in terms of actually filling in large pores or any real kind of texture, texture, I don't feel like it really does that much, which is kind of odd because it does have a fair bit of dimethicone in the ingredients. I think if you have naturally very smooth and flawless skin, you'll be fine, but if you have any real texture that's going to be a concern for you, I wouldn't expect much from this primer. I don't really love this primer. It doesn't increase the longevity of my makeup, it doesn't really control my oils from what I've noticed, and it also doesn't really like smooth pores or texture or give me like a flawless base to work with. The one thing I would say that does is it just hydrates my skin ever so slightly. I think the issue with this primer is that it's just trying to do too much at once and it just kind of falls flat as a result because it's trying to set the bar way too high and create kind of all these expectations and be this like perfect all-in-one primer. I think a better route would have just been like focusing on like one really great mattifying primer or one really great blurring primer. Because for me, this is just a light lotion that dries to a powder finish and it doesn't really seem to have much effect on my makeup at all. Next up, we've got the product that I'm sure you are pretty much all here for and that is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. We 
obviously already know at this point that this foundation comes in an incredible 40 shades with a variety of undertones. I originally ordered shade 160, but then when I went to get my replacement package sent out, 160 was sold out. So I actually ended up with shade 140, which actually worked out in my favor because it's a pretty dang good match once it dries down because this foundation does dry down darker, as I'm sure you've already heard as well. I will include a close-up here showing a fresh swatch versus a dried down swatch on my hand. Just so you guys can see the full extent of how much this foundation does really change with the dry down. Now this foundation is supposed to give you medium to full coverage, be suitable for all skin types, and obviously as you can tell from the name, have a soft matte finish. They say it will instantly smooth your skin for a pore diffusing, shine free finish, and also have an air light texture on your skin. It's also supposed to be sweat and humidity proof, and they say it won't clog your pores, which I definitely have some thoughts on that, which I will share in a minute. Minute. And they do say that you have to give this a shake before using to activate the pigments So that is of course what I have been doing prior to each application One thing I want to mention some people have brought up the fact that this is a bit larger than your standard foundation size Which is true, but it's only an extra 0 0.08 ounces or 2 mil So that's literally an extra 15th of product So if you hear people saying that don't get too excited 2 mil of foundation isn't gonna go that far So my issues with this foundation aren't in the coverage the finish the application, anything like that. My issues stem from the wear and also the effects this product has had on my skin. So I would say this has a fuller medium coverage, like medium, but on the fuller side of the spectrum. It covers everything except for my most red spots and areas. In terms of what I'm looking for for coverage currently, this pretty much hits the nail on the head. It applies quickly and effortlessly with my favorite L'Oreal foundation sponge. It does fine with a brush too, but I found overall I preferred the sponge. And it does have a very nice, thin, and runny consistency so I do agree that it feels extremely lightweight on the skin. It does set to a natural matte finish but it's not a dry or chalky or heavy matte finish. It's still quite skin like and that is one of the things I was most worried about with this product because you guys know I don't typically like a matte finish so I was actually surprised by how much I did like this. For me it does set slightly on its own but not 100%. Even if I leave it for 15 minutes without applying any other products I will still get a tiny tiny bit of transfer when I touch my face so for me I do absolutely need to set this though I can definitely see people with like normal skin not needing to set it with powder but as someone who's oily, I pretty much have to set every foundation I wear. My initial application left me very impressed and I was really expecting to like this foundation. The one thing that does happen pretty much instantaneously is it really creases around my mouth, particularly on the right side of my mouth. I'm not sure why. I'll have a close up here though. You can see this is like seconds after I've applied it and it's already pretty severely creased in that area. So basically, if I had sat down right after I got this foundation, I turned on my camera, I applied it, I finished my makeup, and I turned off the camera, my review would probably be glowing, because I really like this when it is first applied. I'm not saying anyone who put it on in their video and immediately loved it is being dishonest by any means. I'm just really trying to stress that unless they update, we really don't know how people end up feeling about a product like this. I'm just speaking from my personal experience, because I know if I had filmed a video in that format, I would have been like, yes, Everybody should go buy this. This is fantastic. I love how it looks, but that's not how it just ended up turning out The thing is it only takes about four hours for this foundation to completely start breaking down on my skin Especially when I use it with the Fenty Beauty primer it completely wears off on my hairline and the edges of my face It majorly settles into the creases of my nose It just starts to kind of like patch off and separate pretty much everywhere in my t-zone but especially in my mouth area Area, and it just continues to crease in my smile lines around my mouth. I don't really have any expression lines there, but obviously when I smile, it does kind of create creases in that area, and that just gets worse and worse throughout the day. I just want to quickly mention that those close-ups I just showed were not even at the end of the day. They were after about six hours of wear. And I do experience the same signs of wear when I am using this foundation with other primers. It's marginally better, but not at all to the point where I actually find myself wanting to reach for this foundation. I do also think it is important to add that while I was testing this foundation out with different primers, I did make sure to keep my moisturizer and also my powder the same. I have been using both of these products for well over a year and I know they work well with absolutely everything. Just to limit any other variables and keep something content in my routine so I could really focus on how the foundation was performing. Honestly, I'm sure I could get better results if I applied the Fenty Beauty foundation with a mattifying primer and then also a mattifying powder, 
but I don't like a matte finish so at that point I'm not going to be happy with it and it's not worth doing that just to try and make it work. It should be working with my other products, especially when I've tried a variety of things. This foundation just doesn't last on my skin period. Over the past week as I've caught glimpses of myself in the car mirror and in stores as I'm just going about my day, every time I look at my foundation I have not been pleased with how it looks. And most importantly, I feel like this foundation does clog my pores. Before sitting down to film this today and like filming my clips of me applying it, I didn't wear it for a couple days so my skin has kind of settled down. But as I'm sure you can see throughout this past week, I've had some recent breakouts around my mouth and also on my forehead as well. My skin has just been very rough and bumpy and red and just kind of generally unhappy looking while I've been testing this foundation. And I've also been getting blackheads throughout the week of testing this. I really want to stress that I never get blackheads, you guys. I am not prone to them. I exfoliate regularly. I double cleanse to thoroughly remove my makeup every single day before bed. I just don't get blackheads and I've been getting them on my cheeks and also on my forehead while I've been testing this foundation. So I am like, mmm. I just really want to stress that you can sit there and look at a person like me with the foundation on right now and think, wow, your skin looks really great, it looks really flawless and everything, but that really doesn't tell you the whole story or my whole opinion, just because it looks decent at this point when I've only had it on for about an hour and a half. Obviously, I am not a fan of this foundation, in fact, I am going to be returning it tomorrow because I know I'm just not going to be reaching for it with the effects it has had on my skin. I am just one person, keep that in mind, everyone's skin reacts differently to different products, but with the experience I've had with this product, I can in good conscience personally recommend this to anyone. Okay, so we're going to very quickly touch on the Kilowatt Highlighter and also the Gloss Balm Lip Luminizer. I know most of you are here to hear about the foundation and just with the nature of these two products, I don't need to go as far in depth. So we're going to try and keep this brief. So for the highlight, I picked up the duo in Girl Next Door and Chic Freak. As you can obviously tell, this is the more pink, rose gold kind of highlight that they are offering. I haven't commented too much about the packaging from this line, but I do have to say this feels very cheap. Like, the hinge on it and everything feels okay. It feels sturdy. The mirror is nice. I like the design of it, but this plastic is just so incredibly cheap feeling. I was really surprised because in all the videos I've seen, I thought this looked really lovely. So when I actually took it out of the packaging for the first time, I was really kind of disappointed and surprised. I don't know what happened with the packaging on this because the primer and the foundation are so nice. Like they're so heavy. They've got the frosted glass. They're very luxe and very chic. And even the gloss packaging is really nice as well. But this just honestly feels like kids makeup. Fenty Beauty describes these as a cream to powder formula, which I don't really get. I think they were meaning to say that it's a creamy powder because these aren't creams at all. So when I read this, I found that a little bit misleading. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty neutral on this. They're pretty, but they're not the best highlights I've ever tried. I applied this the first day I was testing it out and I haven't gravitated towards it since. I did wear it a couple more times just for testing purposes, but I haven't found myself wanting to reach for it by any means. So the shade Girl Next Door is kind of like a really soft silvery pink with a slight iridescent kind of sheen to it, though I don't think that really picks up when it's actually applied to the face. And Chic Freak is more of a golden peach, rose gold kind of shade with a heavy dose of golden shimmer running through it. I applied one of these to each half of my face as you will see in the clips. With the shade Chic Freak it's not quite reflective enough and it's a little bit too pink for me to really use as a highlight which is something I kind of expected when I did order this shade. So for me this works best as a blush topper or even as an eyeshadow. I did apply it as a highlight in this video just so you guys can see how it looks on my skin tone. I do definitely prefer Girl Next Door which is what I have on the right side of my face. However I have noticed that they definitely look more glowy on camera. So what you're now currently isn't quite how it looks in person from my experience. It's definitely more subtle and toned down than it appears on film. Now finally the lip gloss. Oddly enough, this has been my favorite product from the line by far and the only product that I am truly sold on. This is described as a universal shimmering rose nude that is meant to look great on absolutely everyone, which I have to say I agree with. I have watched a ton of reviews ranging from the lightest to the deepest skin tones and I do think it does look good on everyone. It does have a very plush kind of oversized wand think tart shape tape, which I like but I can definitely see being a downfall for someone who does have slightly thinner lips. It's also peach vanilla scented which I'm 
okay with. It doesn't linger too much and the scent is nice but it's just ever so slightly veering on like too artificial and sickly sweet. I would just say maybe if you're sensitive to scents to give it a whiff before you actually purchase it. You guys know I have naturally more pigmented lips so for me this shade is very my lips but better which is perfect for me right now because I'm currently very into just very effortless and natural lip products that I can just kind of throw on and not worry about. I have seen some other girls who have a similar skin tone to me but their lips aren't as pigmented and this pulls kind of more of a brick tone on them. So just keep that in mind obviously all lip products transform a lot based on your own natural lip color. But yeah, on me, I feel it just enhances my natural lip color really nicely. It's very smooth and not sticky, but it is a little bit thicker, if that makes sense, so it doesn't feel like it's just going to like disappear off your lips. It still stays in place and everything like that. And I feel like that shimmer, that really fine shimmer, does give a really nice wet, plump, kind of perfected look to the lips. It has pretty standard wear for a gloss. I mean, if you're talking a lot, it will start to slowly kind of fade. If you're going to eat or drink anything, it is going to start wearing off. I've tried it alone with lip liner and then also over top of other lipsticks. And I have to say my favorite is probably wearing it on its own, which in the clips you are watching now, that is what I did. Here I am wearing it with just a little bit of lip liner that I lined my lips with and then just kind of like blended it in because this is slightly more sheer. Overall, I really like it if you're into glossy lips and just easy natural shades that you can just throw on I would definitely recommend this but that is it those are my thoughts and that is where I'm going to be wrapping up today's video I'm sure this video is quite long at this point so as always thank you so much for spending this time with me today once again these products will be linked down below if you want further information or want to check any of them out for yourself but I hope you guys have enjoyed and found this helpful I'm very blunt when it comes to reviewing products I don't sugarcoat anything and I know that's not everyone's cup of of tea so hopefully some of you guys have been able to appreciate it give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it it would really help me out go follow me everywhere on social media I am at Sarah Rianne on Twitter Instagram and snapchat and hit that subscribe button down below if you are new to my channel but I will talk to you guys in the next one bye guys